Hey, what's up guys, it's Fresh Baked Pie here. I hope you're all doing well. And in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you my top selections for heavy weapons to use as a heavy gunner, uh, whether you play one right now or whether you play one in the future, if you're looking for optimal DPS. Now, before we get into that, I just wanted to talk to you guys about a couple things. The first thing is actually a question. Would you guys be interested in watching me live stream some of my Fallout 76 play sessions? Yes or no? Comment down below and let me know. And if I get enough responses for yes, then I will absolutely set up my stream here on YouTube and I will stream for you guys a few nights a week. And the second thing I wanted to say was if you're ever interested on knowing when I might be posting the next video or what it might be about or when they go live because I also post it, you can follow me on Twitter at the handle at the bottom of the screen right now. And of course you'll get all those updates. Um, of course you can also subscribe to the channel here on YouTube and hit the notification bell. And if this video is helpful to you, you can also hit that thumbs up button. But without further ado guys, let's jump right into it. All right, guys, so first before I start, I am just going to let you know I'm going to assume most of you run as a bloodied heavy gunner. So everything I talk about is going to be based off of a bloodied heavy weapon. Um, and it may or may not have a secondary prefix of something like explosive or increased damage while aiming or faster fire rate. But the main thing is the bloodied prefix. Now, if you are somebody who does not use a bloodied build, you prefer aristocrats or juggernauts or anti-armor or any other one star prefix then that does not necessarily mean that this weapon is bad for you it just means you will not have as high of a dps as somebody who is running a bloodied build all right guys so my first recommendation is going to be the classic minigun yes that's right the minigun is actually quite powerful if you set it up the right way so what you're going to want to do if you have a minigun is use the accelerated barrel for it not the prime barrel the accelerated barrel is going to get your shots off faster therefore increasing your dps overall of course if you're going for the most powerful version of it you're going to want the bloody prefix but any powerful prefix like junkie anti-armor aristocrats juggernaut um, any one of those is going to be good as well along with vampires so don't worry about ammo too much because you're not going to prime it ammo crafting is going to be relatively uh, low cost and five millimeter rounds are not very hard to come by you can farm them through daily ops or through super mutants and if you have the ammo crafting machine at your camp you can set that to make five millimeter rounds for you as well so keep that in mind it's pretty uh pretty easy to get a bunch of five millimeter ammo but one of the biggest cons of the minigun is how fast it will chew through that ammo. And one of the other biggest cons of the minigun is that while the barrel is either spinning up or spinning down after you're done firing, you cannot use any of your aid items. So make sure to keep that in mind. If your health is being drained, stop shooting and start spamming your stim pack. Otherwise, you may end up dying. So the next weapon to make my recommendation lift is the... 50 caliber machine gun. It is a very powerful high DPS weapon with a high rate of fire and it's just a solid choice overall guys. Now it's something I personally used for quite a while. In fact I didn't trade it out of my arsenal until the Goss minigun came about. So it is highly recommended by me to use this weapon if you're looking for something to deal um, high DPS. I would definitely say prime it. Prime the receiver farm the flux, farm the ammo to make sure you have enough of the ultrasite ammo in stock, and make sure you use the heavy barrel on it as well. Of course, go for any prefix you want um, as far as the legendary effects, but bloodied explosive is going to be the most powerful variant you can get with it. Now that being said, I would say one of the drawbacks is obviously keeping up with the ultrasite ammo, and then of course, I don't believe it has a very quick reload time, but speed demon should mitigate this. Um, other than that, not too many drawbacks. Um, it's a heavy weapon, so expect it to be heavy. And of course, you're going to want to lug around quite a bit of ammo for it because it has a fast fire rate and will chew through that ammo pretty quickly. 
Other than that though guys, it is a very solid weapon. If you happen to land a good roll, hold on to it unless you're not a heavy gunner. Then uh, if you are going to sell it, make sure you sell it for something of equal or greater value. Don't let it go for cheap, okay? Now my next two recommendations are essentially mirrors of each other. It is going to be the Plasma Caster and the Gatling Gun. Now these weapons are not known for their insanely high DPS, but what they are known for is being able to kill enemies in just a few hits and conserving ammo. I use the Gatling Gun as my main weapon on a day-to-day -day basis for my gameplay. I only bring out my DPS weapon when I have to fight a boss type enemy or the Queen or Earl. And that is because uh, it helps me conserve ammo greatly. So for the Plasma Caster, you are going to want to prime it as usual. Um, you, it would it's just better bang for your buck when crafting ammo to go with that ultra sight same for the gatling gun prime it get the ultra sight ammo it is totally worth it to farm flux or to buy flux and then use those perks to help you craft a ton of ammo and don't forget about farming in daily ops guys it can be very efficient and it can be very beneficial to your ammo reserves but yes, the Plasma Caster and the Gatling Gun, either one of them, the Gatling Gun is slightly more powerful, and it is the one I prefer to use, but both of them are great for day-to-day -day use against trash mob enemies, instead of constantly using your high DPS weapon and running through your ammo reserves all the time, so keep that in mind. Alright guys, the next recommendation is going to be the Gatling Plasma, the non-legacy version. I do not condone use of any legacy weapons. So the non-legacy version, however, is still plenty powerful on its own. It deals crazy high DPS. Very good weapon overall. Um, drawback is you're going to have to craft those Ultra Sight Fusion Cores because you're definitely going to want to prime that receiver for optimal, optimal DPS. Um, but then you're going to need those Ultra Sight Plasma Cores to keep it fed. But very good heavy weapon overall if you manage to land a good roll or are able to trade for one. All right, so the second to last recommendation I have for you is the Gauss minigun. Now, this weapon, you have to grind out faction reputation with the raiders at Crater, and then spend gold bullion to get the weapons and the mods, and then spend legendary modules to get a good roll. If you do manage to do all this, the roll you would be aiming for, uh, if you're looking for optimized DPS, would be a bloodied faster fire rate one if you are not going for a bloodied variant of this gun then honestly i probably wouldn't recommend it to you at all um just because of the drawbacks which are its ammo consumption rate the weight of the ammo itself and the high cost of crafting the ammo and the inability to farm it very efficiently in daily ops or just anywhere in general okay so those are the major drawbacks of the gauss minigun but in terms of dps especially if you are able to get a bloodied faster fire rate one with a tri barrel tri barrel and a prime receiver it is going to rain over all of the previously mentioned heavy weapons okay it is just more powerful and and by a, a good margin by a decent percentage not not something crazy but by a good percentage all right so it's a very efficient weapon it's what i use as my go-to dps but it's not my number one spot my number one spot is going to go to the flamer yes that's right the flamer it is king in terms of just general raw dps when you throw on the napalm tank vaporization nozzle and the huge propellant tank for the maximized ammo capacity it just literally melts through enemies and it performs very well against earl and the scorch beast queen okay now a little caveat it is actually slightly weaker then the Gauss minigun against Earl and the Scorch Beast Queen in terms of DPS, but against everything else in general, it it is just so superior to every other heavy weapon. It is insane. All right. Now, when I say it's slightly weaker than the Gauss minigun against Earl and the Queen, it's less than a two percent com comparison. It's less than a two percent difference in DPS. So almost nothing at all guys and the flamer it's much easier to get a better roll for however fuel it's a little harder to manage um it doesn't weigh a whole lot so you can carry quite a bit especially if you use batteries included but crafting it is kind of not great it costs uh 
10 acid, 5 oil, and 2 steel to craft just 20 fuel. So honestly, I, I think it's better to farm the fuel in daily ops than to just try and farm a bunch of materials to, to craft a bunch of fuel at once. And then of course there is the vaporization nozzle bug, guys, and this is probably going to be the most you know, annoying drawback of the weapon itself. You have to change the vaporization nozzle to some other uh, nozzle and then change it back to the vaporization nozzle to get the range to work correctly. Otherwise, you'll have this very short range with it. Um, and you have to do this every time you log into the game or if you jump servers, you have to change that nozzle to get the range unbugged. For some reason, it's bugged still to this day, so keep that in mind. But in terms of DPS, the flamer wins out over all the other heavy weapons. So there you have it. That's my recommendation list for the heavy weapons you should be using if you want to maximize your DPS as a heavy gunner, especially if you are a bloodied power armor using heavy gunner. All right. So if you think that I got something wrong, if you have a differing opinion, if you know of something that I didn't mention that should be on this list, or if you felt like I didn't mention something on this list but should be there, let me know all of that down in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you guys think. Also, let me know, was this list kind of on par with what you expected or already knew, or did you learn something from it? And then finally, the main thing I want to hear from you guys is, would you like me to do more lists like these? Would you like to hear about the other weapon um, types in the game? or even other armor types in the game? Or is there some other type of guide that you would be interested in seeing me do for you guys? Let me know all of that down in the comment section below. Now guys, if you made it this far into the video, please consider hitting that thumbs up button and like the video. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you have not already, as it would really help me out. I hope you guys have an excellent rest of your day, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, and I'll see you guys next time.